right, good afternoon. I think everyone's here. For those of you guys that are out in the uh, surrounding areas, if you guys want to come in so you can hear a little bit more, uh, that might be better. I'm not going to yell because we got a lot of microphones and I don't want to create an issue. Uh, first and foremost, my name is uh, Ashley Henson. Uh, I'll be conducting this press conference. I'm going to introduce a lot of people. Uh, we'll get, make sure you get all the spellings uh, here in just a moment. Um, but first, we need to make sure everyone silences or either turns off your cell phones uh, so we don't have any disruptions during the press conference. Um, once everyone does that, I would like to ask for a moment of silence for Deputy Brandon Cunningham. Thank you. I'm going to call first up uh, Senior Chaplain Joey Meeks. He's going to open uh, the press conference with a word of prayer for us. Again, thank you for being here today. Let's pray. Father, as we come, we just were so humbled by the outpouring of love from the community and our state, our county, Father. I'm praying today that you just touch the uh, Cunningham family, Father. I pray, God, such a tragic loss, Father praying that you just move in a special way. We pray for our community. We're praying today for our deputies, our staff, uh, Lord, that you just build a huge hedge of protection around their mind, body, and spirit, Father. Praying, God, today that you just move in this family and the Holy Spirit of God just drop them and hold them, Father, and just give them the only comfort that you can give. We love you, thank you, and want to praise and honor you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you, uh, I want everyone to take a look behind me. Behind me are men and women who are sheriffs, chiefs, command staff for law enforcement agencies, not only in Metro Atlanta, but across the state of Georgia. I want you to let that sink in for a moment and look at who's here. There's too many to, there's too many to identify. But what I want you to know is we have their support. We all have their support. Paulding County was founded in 1832. In 1834, we had our first sheriff. Since 1834, we've never lost a deputy in the line of duty. Deputy Brandon Cunningham was our first deputy. I want to thank all the elected officials, all the sheriffs and chiefs, and all of the citizens who came out. This is overwhelming. We're going to go over a few things. I'll allow you some questions at the end, so if you will, just hold your questions. Um, we've got several people that have uh, things to say today, so if you'll just bear with us, we'll get to your questions in just a moment. So first and foremost, I'm going to go over the basic incident of what took place. This past Saturday, the Paulding County Sheriff's Office world changed forever. At about 6.13 p.m., Deputy Brandon Cunningham and his partner responded to a domestic dispute. And as we all know in law enforcement, there are no calls that are routine. They responded to the home. They did everything as if they should have, according to our training, our policy. And when they got there, they were met with evil. When Deputy Cunningham got out of his vehicle, within eight seconds of his arrival, he was gunned down. He never had a shot. He never had an opportunity to do anything. It, what happened to Brandon that day was pure evil. Brandon was shot, he was down, he was mortally wounded, what we later found out. In the midst of that, the female party to the domestic dispute, which they were responding to, was also shot. His partner, one of our other deputies, it's by the grace of God that he was not shot. The shooter came, was shooting from an elevated position inside the home with a rifle. The shooter had every advantage in the world. As de other deputies responded to the scene, they were met with gunfire. From what we're being told and what we've been able to discover uh, as a result of looking at other evidence and videos is that they were met with a hell of gunfire. Other deputies were pinned down. They could not get to Deputy Cunningham. His partner couldn't get to him. Deputies responded with our Bearcat armored vehicle and formulated a quick uh, response team to go and rescue Deputy Cunningham. They went to the scene, they were able to position the Bearcat where they could get, his, uh, get him and take him to an awaiting ambulance. They took him to Paulding Wellstar Hospital where he, uh, medical professionals attempted to save his life, but that did not work. Brandon passed away at the hospital. Multiple SWAT teams 
from all over the metro area came out to assist us and after a very long time of working with our SWAT team and other SWAT teams using uh, our Bearcats, robots, drones, and other equipment, we were able to determine that the shooter was, had died as a result of what has appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The shooter is James Samuel Atkins. He's a white male, 42 years of age. His wife, who is the female victim in this situation, is Kim Vu, 52 years of age. She is still in the hospital recovering from her gunshot wound. There were only two individuals shot in this incident. I know there was some misinformation. Our deputy, Deputy Cunningham, and Miss Vu. Those were the only two individuals other than the shooter. The shooter took his own life. But the two innocent people were our deputy and the female victim. Once the, situa once the scene was clear, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, uh, well actually they were already on the scene, they responded to assist, but they are conducting the investigation into the incident. Um, we've got Special Agent in Charge Joe Montgomery who's going to come up in just a moment. He's going to talk about the GBI's uh, perspective of the case. Um, that's the basic overview of the situation that occurred. If you have any questions, we'll deal with those in just a moment. I want to bring up Sheriff Gary Gulledge. He is our sheriff. He's been a, he's lived in this county his entire life. He's been our sheriff for 16 years. He's committed his life to the sheriff's office. He's worked at our sheriff's office for 34 years. He's about to retire in December. So I want to give you, uh, I want to make sure you guys hear what he has to say, and I'll bring up Sheriff Gary Gulledge next. This is a day I hope never happened, but it did. I first want to thank the Paulding County Sheriff's Office deputies here, our staff, and their families for standing beside all of us together. We'll get through this, we'll be stronger for it, but it's not gonna be easy. I also wanna thank all that have supported and assisted us throughout this difficult time. The surrounding sheriff's offices, the police departments, the GBI, our public safety agencies all across the metro area, EMS and fire, Paulton Hospital, all of their doctors, nurses, and staff was fantastic. Our district attorney's office, our judges, our chaplains, our peer support team members, everybody has, has been has stood up and went above and beyond. I can't leave out our public. This county has always supported this agency. It has always loved us. They've always stood behind us. As you can see around here today, they are. If you look at the monument, if you look at the monument, the public has uh, showing their love to us and to, and to y'all. <sighs> Deputy Brandon Cunningham, was a very hard and dependable worker. His supervisors all love and have him on their shift. He had a bright future and a career at this agency or any other agency that he would have chosen to work for. He's a tremendous asset to this agency. He was always in a good mood. His smile was contagious and would light up whatever room he walked into. A little personal about Brandon, he enjoyed gaming. He enjoyed going and seeing our Atlanta Braves in good and bad, as we all must do. He was a huge sneakerhead. If you look at pictures of him, it's a tennis shoe this and tennis shoe that. I don't understand it, but he was a sneakerhead. He was a humble servant as a deputy as he was at home and around all of his loved ones. He had the warmest heart, and he gave his whole heart to his children and those that he loved and cherished. His supervisors that I've talked to all have one opinion of him. They all wanted him on their shift because he never complained. He was always had a smile on his face. He was, give me the call, I've got it, I'll go take it. I also want to thank this community as you can see standing around us. And I know they will throughout the weeks and the years to come. They will support us, they will stand behind us. The amount of food, water to the family, to the Sheriff's Office family is, is it's almost und undescribable. They're always supported us in prayer all the churches in this community are standing behind us in prayer. I want to thank the community for all your calls, the cards, the food, the flowers. And I also want to pass on our condolences for everybody that's come and placed something on Brandon's uh, memorial vehicle. I think it'll help our guys a lot to come out and see that this community does, in, in fact, stand behind us as we all know that they do. Thank you all for coming out today, and I appreciate your support. Next up to speak will be our Chief Deputy, Colonel Chad Hunton. 
Colonel Hunt is another lifelong resident of Paulding County. He's been with the Sheriff's Office 27 years, and he's got some things he's going to tell you about Brandon as well. Colonel. First, I just want to say thank you to this community and the law enforcement across this state, across this country. We can't thank y'all enough. I know the sheriff went into detail, but I wanted to say that. The family asked me to say a few words for them. They gave me the words to say for them. From the Cunningham family, the community's love and support has been more overwhelming and we are nothing but grateful. They're very appreciative. I've been with them most of the day today. And just as they're hurting, we're hurting. So I'm asking y'all, please keep them in prayer. Lift them up. Lift up this sheriff's office family. Unfortunately, we, we prepare for this. But are you truly prepared? No, we're not. So please continue to lift everybody up in prayer. God bless you all. Thank you. Next up, I want to call Special Agent in Charge Joe Montgomery of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. He's going to speak to you about aspects that are dealing with the GBI. Uh, good afternoon. Our hearts and our prayers with the GBI go out to the Sheriff's Office here. We've been friends for a long time. Um, about 7 o'clock Saturday night, we received a call from the Sheriff's Office requesting assistance with a um, possible officer-involved shooting at a death investigation. So when we arrived down here, we waited until they had the scene secure. Uh, we went in and, and uh, took over the scene, uh, processed the scene, and um, found that Mr. Atkins had had an elevated position with a scoped rifle, and that's how he was able to murder Deputy Cunningham uh, in such a short period of time. Uh, they were approximately 84 feet away uh, when the first shot rang out and uh, tried to get cover from that point on. Uh, we believe he shot about 16 times with an AR-15 uh, 556 caliber rifle uh, and as Major Henson has told you the, the events that brought them there that day our job was to come in and, and to show and, and kind of give the, the sheriff's office some healing by letting them know what exactly had happened um, none of the deputies were able to get a shot off because of uh, the position that Mr. Atkins was in with the rifle uh, and just a, it's just an awful day our hearts go out to them, and I hope this, this community will continue to pray and support the Sheriff's Office because they do good work here. Thank you. Next up uh, is our Commission Chairman, retired Colonel Dave Carmichael. He is the Commission Chairman of the Paulding County Board of Commissioners. I stand here today in representing five commissioners, Commissioner Dunn, Commissioner Caker, Commissioner Galloway, and Commissioner Snyder, and also 900 employees who woke up this morning with a hole in our heart in sadness for what happened on Saturday night. And it's just uh, something that, you know, just tears you apart. Uh, we as a very strong community and uh, relationship with the Sheriff's Office and the other law enforcement folks in the county uh, work together all the time, day to day, and we do pray for each other and lift each other up. But we would never think something like this would happen, uh, would we? But I know no, uh, no team of law enforcement could be any more prepared than our team is here in Paulding County. But uh, the loss of life of a young man who <coughs> was getting ready to be married and he also had two children that aren't going to have a dad, and his parents aren't going to have a son, and I could go on naming other uh, forms of loss that uh, Deputy Cunningham 
is never going to experience, never experience the blessing I've had having a lot of grandchildren. He's never going to be able to, uh, to do that. And we just uh, mourn with the rest of the group here. And we also take the time to, to thank our law enforcement for the tremendous job that they do and the readiness that they uh, are day in, day out, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And also we'll continue to lift up prayers for the entire uh, public safety uh, element around Paulding County. Thank you. We've got a couple more things, but something that uh, hit me earlier and I want to share with you guys because it, it means something to me. So I wear this pink bracelet on my wrist and I wear it for a friend of mine's daughter who was senselessly murdered in Valdosta. And he texted me earlier and he said, I'm praying for you. And he said that Deputy Cunningham was the one who came and told him that his daughter had been murdered while she was at Valdosta State University in college. And Brandon was met with the same fate his daughter was met with. And I don't, it's just, it's just unbelievable irony. So it just, I don't know, it's very difficult. This is very difficult for a lot of people. Um, but I thought that was important to share uh, because he was such a great guy. So we've got a, a few other things we want to go over. Um, we've had such an outpouring of love and support from the community as you can see the the memorial is growing we've had a lot of people want to donate money and we've also had people wanting to profit from this scammers are wanting to profit from the death of deputy cunningham so we have partnered with paulding public safety appreciation i want to call uh, jared ison i'm not sure where he is i know he's here somewhere he was is he back here jared if you would come up He's going to say a couple things, but Paulding Public Safety Appreciation is a nonprofit, and that's who we've partnered with. I'm actually a part of their board, but Jared's going to say a couple words about how we're collecting money and where the money is going to go, and that this is the only approved location for you to give money. So I'll call Jared up here to have a to say a couple words. Thank you, Major Henson. My name is Jared Ice. I'm the president of Paulding Public Safety Appreciation here in Paulding County. If you want to donate to this cause, you can go to our website, which is www.paldingpsa, which stands for public safety appreciation.com. All of the money that we raise, 100%, will go to the family. We as an organization will absorb any costs that we take on credit card processing or anything else. We also have t-shirts available, bracelets, and we're working on a challenge coin as well. But again, it's www.paldingpsa.org for Paulding Public Safety Appreciation. Thank you. We will be posting that information on uh, our social media pages and on our website as well. Um, so please make sure everyone knows, do not donate. If it's not Paulding PSA, do not donate, okay? So a couple of the things, um, we've been able to preliminarily uh, be able to deliver some funeral information. So preliminarily, and I don't know that we have times yet, uh, the funeral, the visitation and funeral will be at West Ridge Church. Uh, on Friday, and I'm not sure that date, but this Friday, and I don't know the times yet, um, he will be buried at Kennesaw Memorial Park. It's on uh, Georgia 120, just before you get to Marietta Highway on the left if you're, if you're, as you're going east. So the service will be at West Ridge Church. Clark's Funeral Home will be in charge of the arrangements. The service will be Friday, and I don't know the times yet. Do we know the times? We don't have the times yet, but it will be Friday at West Ridge Church. He will be buried um, at the cemetery over in Marietta. Um, he has currently been at the GBI where an autopsy is being conducted. He will travel back to Paulding County tonight. Uh, the escort will leave the GBI headquarters at 8 p.m. He will be escorted back by numerous law enforcement. Uh, so if citizens or anyone wants to stand along the roadside, he will come back. Uh, via US 278 to Clark's Funeral Home. Uh, so that is welcomed, uh, but he will be back at some time, sometime between 8 and 9 p.m. tonight to the funeral home. We don't have any of the times yet, but we will put all that out. We'll put all the information out for our law enforcement partners, for our community partners. Um, but as you all can imagine, uh, this is a very difficult time for us. I wanna thank everybody for coming out. Uh, we've got time for a few questions if you have any. Uh, I think we've got the right people here. So if you have any questions and you would like to ask, that would be fine. And if not, we certainly understand and we appreciate your attention and your time. Did Atkins have a criminal history with you guys? Have you ever responded to any domestic violence events at the house? So from what we've been able to discover, and this is all preliminary, 
Um, we do know that Atkins did have an extensive criminal history. Uh, we have um, quite a few calls for service at that residence. Uh, we do know that he was convicted in Cobb County for a robbery back in, I believe it was 2011. Uh, so he was a convicted felon. Um, and so obviously there's, when that's being said, we got to figure out where that gun came from. So our detectives along with GBI agents will be working into that uh, avenue of the case to determine where the gun came from, uh, how he was able to possess it and things like that. But from what we've been able to discover preliminarily is that he did have a criminal history. I don't specifically remember them. I've sworn in every officer that works here. So there's over 300 of them that I've sworn in. Uh, I seen a picture of myself and it's, as I said earlier, it's like he's standing in the room, the room's brighter because he was in it with a smile on his face. Uh, everybody I talked to from the trainers at the school, it, everybody says the same thing about him. He's, he's a leader, he was gonna be a leader here and every, every supervisor that ever had him wanted him and every one of them says the same thing. And me personally as a sheriff, I wished I had 300 just like him and I'd have a whole lot less problems here. If there are no other questions, uh, this will conclude the press conference. We will have information coming out uh, as soon as we have it uh, regarding the times and all the things regarding the funeral. Uh, as you can imagine with the sheer presence of law enforcement behind us today, there will be a large presence at Westridge. Um, so please be patient with us as we get that information. Uh, we're working closely with the family to make sure we honor their wishes because it's not about what we want, it's about what the family wants. So uh, with, if there are no other questions, thank you all for your time. Citizens, thank you all. Uh, to our law enforcement partners, thank you. Um, and, and God bless you. Keep praying for our Sheriff's Office. Thank you very much.